Hello and welcome to episode number 22 of Tradecraft Security Weekly. I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and this week I'm going to be talking to you about doing some Linux privilege escalation attacks. Uh, so in this episode, um, I'm going to try to detail a fairly straightforward methodology for performing various attacks that will gain you access to root privileges um, from a low-level user on a Linux system. Um, a lot of these techniques will probably benefit you if you're currently uh, working on your OSCP um, or just in the real world. If you're, do if you're attacking a Linux system, you got a shell and you need to get root, hopefully some of this will help you. This is not by any means a, an all-encompassing, um, you know, if, if you don't, if you don't get root by following this tutorial, um, there's likely many other ways you could still probably get root. Um, but this is this is just to give you kind of a general overview of some of the things that I do when I start looking at uh, privilege escalating on Linux systems. So let's jump right in. So you got a shell, right? Now, depending on how you got here, you might not be root. You might be a pretty low-level user. Um, you know, typically, if 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 uh, the admin of a web server has followed the documentation correctly and set up the web server in the correct manner, then hopefully they're not running it as a root user. And if you have exploited that web server, um, you're you're probably running under a low-level user, such as WW Data uh, or whatnot. So now it becomes a game of you have a shell. What can you do? First, let's figure out more about the system. Let's do a little situational awareness, just just as we would on a on a Windows system. You know, we got to figure out where we are on the network, figure out what services are running, what the OS uh, uh, version is. Is there are there any patches missing, and whatnot. So, um, one of the first things I always do is is uh, just just get the kernel information. So you can do uname dash a to figure out what kernel version you're running, um, which will become more important later when we talk about finding exploits for the OS. Uh, env is a command that will get you the environment variables. A lot of times you can find like, you know, people put credentials in environment variables for some reason. It's crazy. Um, who am I? Uh, will give you the current username of the user you're running as. So if, if you know, you get a shell for the first time and you don't know who you are, who am I will tell you who that is. Uh, history is, is a very important command that I actually don't see mentioned as often as it probably should be mentioned. So if you get shell as a user and you run history, you get the command history for that user. You can see every single command that was ever run as that user. So if that user has ever, you know, tried to, uh, to, to, to SSH somewhere and maybe they typed a password in instead of a username, you might have a password in clear text in a, in like a, in a history, uh, file basically. Um, PWD to get, you know, you're obviously your present working directory. So if you land on a web server um, and that web server is running in a certain directory, that can be useful information to figure out more about that certain web server itself uh, to figure out maybe what kind of uh, software it is, um, where, you're, where you're at in location to the rest of the file system and whatnot. Um, let's find out who else is logged in while we're there. So the who command, w command, um, they'll tell you who currently um, are logged into the system. And then you also have last, which will give you information about previous logins. Um, and then you want to know if you, the, the current user you're running as, is a member of the sudoers file. Now, if you're a member of the sudoers file, that allows you to run uh, commands as an administrative user of that system. So if you do sudo-l, that will actually list out some of the, the, the commands you can run as a sudoer. Um, if you cat the Etsy sudoers file, that will tell you first off if you're a member of the sudoers file or not. Um, now, if you're not, uh, you might want to find another super user who, who does have access, or you could just go straight after root. Um, but always keep in mind that root is not the only administrator of every Linux system. Sometimes you have other super users who have the ability to run commands as uh, root as well. So you can run this, this grep command, uh, the grep CFC password file um, for super users. The other thing that you want to know is, is networking info. So uh, you want to know what interfaces are on the system. Um, so, like, you can you can use ifconfig-a to get information about just the interfaces that are listening on the current system. Netstat uh, information will give you what ports are currently open and, and what processes are attached to those ports. Um, so you might be able to find various services that are running um, that you could access from the local host that you, maybe you couldn't access from, from external hosts that could be interesting. Um, and then lsof-i is another very, very useful command uh, for when you're, when you're looking at information on a system. So look, let's look at the kernel version again. So back to the uname-a command. <clears throat> so what we want to figure out here is, is the OS itself and the kernel specifically vulnerable to any sort of attacks that would enable us to escalate our privileges. So if you run uname-a, you'll get an output that will give you the kernel version. Now, 
One of my favorite tools is Searchsploit. So if you take Searchsploit, um, which is included by default in Kali, Searchsploit has the ability to go and search through ExploitDB. Um, ExploitDB is the database of all the, basically the exploit code that you would want to go search for um, when looking for an exploit for any given software. So uh, Searchsploit kernel 2.6 Linux, that will basically, th that command is telling Searchsploit to go search for uh, exploits for the kernel Linux kernel version 2.6 and sort it into uh, sort it into a nice list so that we can look through it and uh, find um, an exploit hopefully for that version of Linux now um, if you look at the the screenshot here on the right you can, you can kind of see where you've got Linux kernel 2.6 uh, less than 2.6.19 um, so this might be an exploit that we could possibly use um, you want to kind of filter th through these two because like you'll see some of them are denial of service you don't want to run any denial of service because that'd be um, th just a bad idea to just kill your shell um, don't do that um, you, you want to find a good privilege escalation exploit that fits the version and then the most important thing here is make sure you read through the code don't just go blindly running some exploit you found on the internet um, because it can lead to very very bad results and things that you probably don't want to actually happen to that system so read through the code, figure out what it does, learn what the, the actual exploit is doing, um, and then if you feel comfortable, copy it over to the system, compile it, run it, um, and hope for the best. You, know, you might be able to actually just exploit the system from a kernel level to, to get a root shell. Um, another thing, let's look at vulnerable services on the system, okay? So PSAUX will list out the, the various services that are currently running on that Linux system. Um, let's look for services that are running as a privileged user. So if you pipe PSAUX to, let's say, grep root, um, that will find all the services that are running as the root user. And if we see services that uh, look interesting, we can go try to look for exploits for those certain services, right? So, um, you know, look for various various services that um, are, are various pieces of software that you you could go search exploit DB for back to search exploit again um, and try to find versions or, or find exploits for the certain versions of the software that's currently running on that system um, because if you can exploit it and it's running as root you might be able to uh, gain root privileges just by sim simply running an exploit against a local piece of software. Um, another thing that will help in figuring out the various versions is using like um, uh, dpkg-l um, on Debian systems, rpm-qa on Red Hat systems to list out the various pieces of software that are installed in the versions. Um, and then you can look at specific softwares themselves for versions too. Like so HTTPD-V will give you the, um, the, the HTTPD version. MySQL-S version will give you the MySQL version. Python-S version gives you Python, Python version. Um, so on and so forth. So um, look, look for various versions of different pieces of software and then determine if those pieces of software have an exploit available themselves. <clears throat> the other thing to do is look for interesting files on a system. So um, a lot of times you'll find that there's certain executables that have uh, like th that are able to be ran as as an admin um, from a low level user. So these are typically called SUID files, um, and you can find them uh, with this find command that will basically list out the, these various files that are run as the owner of the file. Uh, so if the owner is root, it'll run as them, even though the user running it is a low level user. So you can potentially find that you can run like a higher privileged file. Um, or executable that will allow you to gain um, that will allow you to to gain additional privileges and, and and maybe break out of that into a shell as that privileged user. Uh, the password hashes for a Linux system typically stored in Etsy Shadow. So um, if you can count that file, um, which by you know default on most Linux systems you can't because you have to privilege just to even view that file. But if you can, uh, you might have the password hashes for the various users, and then you could crack those. <clears throat> um, any any files you can overwrite that get run by root would be interesting. Um, so if you can search through the various jobs and tasks to figure out um, that a certain file is being run by the root user, um, you might be able to overwrite it and have it run your file instead, which could potentially give you um, uh, a privileged uh, access as well, depending on, on how that's being run. Uh, you can look for SSH keys um, in various folders. So you might be able to find that a user's SSH keys uh, are stored on the system that would allow you to, you know, maybe even SSH to the local host or to another system as that user. 
<clears throat> which could, again, pr provide you more privilege either somewhere else or on the local host. Um, the other thing to, to do is always look for clear text creds for, for, uh, in files for like various scripts, databases, uh, config files. Um, I was on a, on a web assessment recently where I got OS command injection remotely, got a shell on the system, and found a number of various clear text creds just all over the place. Found uh, the database, the MySQL database uh, admin password uh, in clear text in a file. Um, I found a number of config files that were pointed to like Amazon AWS services that had clear text AWS keys. Um, and so like, you know, these things like not necessarily need to be root to be viewed. So you might, you know, in the end, not actually need to be a root or an administrator to really find what you want to find. Um, if you can just look through various files for clear text creds, that might be all you need. Um, so there's some scripts out there that will automate a lot of this. Um, so a lot of what I just said is just me manually poking around on a system or, or you um, when you're looking for ex uh, privilege escalation vulnerabilities. But um, there are scripts to do it. So check out Linux Priv, uh, Priv Checker. Um, that's a really good one. Unix Priv Check and Lenny Noom. Um, all three of these are in very much interesting in, in terms of finding various priv privilege escalation exploits um, and, and assisting you in figuring out where to, to look for exploits. So I'm going to show a quick demo. Um, to, uh, to kind of give you an idea of some, some of the ways you can look at this. So what I have here is I have, um, so there's a site called Volnhub, which I highly recommend if, if you haven't seen Volnhub, basically Volnhub is a site that uh, will, they, they host a number of vulnerable virtual machines. And so this is their Mr. Robot virtual machine, which is very interesting. Um, basically this one is simulated to be uh, a system that's similar to one from one of the episodes of Mr. Robot. And this particular VM um, does have a few additional steps prior to getting where I'm gonna jump in right here, but I didn't wanna like spoil the initial, like how to get access. Um, we're gonna jump right to the privilege escalation. So um, after, after you get a shell on this particular system, um, we can you know, do things like who am I and see that we're the user robot. Okay, so user robot. Um, let's let's jump into a, a, a more interesting shell first off. So, um, you know, we're, we're in a very basic command shell at this point. Um, we can jump into uh, a full bin, bin bash shell. Um, this is actually a, a technique that I've used multiple times on like various assessments as well as in um, CTF infrastructures um, to jump either out of a protected shell um, or just to, to get a, a better um, a better shell from from a visual perspective anyway. So this will give you like your typical bin bash. It's 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 using Python. Um, so you, a lot of times you'll find restricted shells that won't let you run certain commands. And you know all it takes sometimes is that that restricted shell lets you run Python. And if it lets you run Python, you might be able to actually break out of that jail and import um, an actual uh, bin uh, bin bash. Uh, shell into that session and, and use that instead. Um, all right, so let's look at the, the OS for a minute. All right, so this is uname a uh, We can see that it's a Linux uh, 3.13 kernel. <clears throat> so um, one of the first things that I would I would typically do is just, like I said, jump over to search exploit and see if we can find any privilege escalation exploits for kernel 3.13 uh, Linux, and we're gonna pipe that to sort-n. Okay, so now SearchSploit has gone on its search through ExploitDB. It's found a number of different uh, potential things that match to our search, which was kernel 3.13. Uh, you'll notice that some are to specific versions, 3.13.1, .1, you got 3.13.0, less than 3.19. Um, you're gonna wanna sort through this a bit too because you've got a number here that, that are just denial of service and you don't wanna just kill your shells. I mean, that'd just be a bad day. Um, look for ones that are actually privilege escalation uh, exploits read through the code again don't just blindly run anything um, if you feel like one would be a, a good exploit to help you get privilege escalation go ahead and run it <clears throat> in this particular vm I, I already know the the path that we're going to use for this one so i'm not going to use the exploit or use an exploit to do it in that manner because there's another technique i want to show you that's kind of interesting so uh again let's look through let's look through the services so we can you know this would be a typical way to go about looking um, using PSAUX to see if we have any services in here that are interesting to us that we could then go uh, <clears throat> go try to find exploits for. Um, but one of the one of the ways you um, 
you get uh, root privileges on this sp specific VM is through SUID files. So like I mentioned earlier, we can do find slash dash perm dash u equals s dash type f and then we're going to send that to dev null and what we'll see here is a list of various files that have suid permissions and what you'll notice is there are a few different ones here um, but the the interesting one that we're going to pay attention to is the nmap the nmap file here so nmap in, in previous versions of nmap, the newer version does not actually have this problem. Um, previous versions of nmap allowed you to run in, in what's called interactive mode. So in this version of nmap, and again, like this is the way this is working is because these are SUID files, nmap is, is owned by root, okay? Now, since it's owned by root, when I run nmap, I'm a low level user, but when I run nmap, it's actually running under root privileges. So when I run nmap dash s interactive, I now have this nmap interactive shell, okay? Now this nmap interactive shell allows for a couple things. Um, I think if we type help, we can see that, yes. Okay, so the, the very important part about this and why this works is, is um, that there's a command um, that if you use the exclamation point and then a command, it actually will run that command as a, sh as a shell command. So now we are a root user in an nmap shell, now, if we just run exclamation point sh, we're now sitting at a root shell. So that that's a very basic example of privilege escalation. But this is one of the ways that you can go about looking for this type of thing on um, on any system, on any Linux Linux system. So that's just one example. But um, you know, like I said, like there's there's a lot of ways to go about finding other vulnerabilities. But that's just to give you an idea of how to go about looking for it. So Again, exploits. Uh, look for um, look for um, look for suit files. Look for services that are vulnerable. Look for kernel versions that are vulnerable. Um, look for clear text credentials. There's a lot of ways to go about finding ways to to escalate your privileges on a system. But that's pretty much it for this episode. For the blue team, the, the biggest thing is keep your distros patched. Um, keep the pieces of software um, that are running on your distribu distributions uh, free of of any bugs that would allow um, a user to uh, escalate their privileges. Um, I, I've, I'm going to throw a bunch of links in the show notes below. Um, but you know, one of the main things, go check out Got Milk's uh, privilege escalation guide. I used it a ton back in like 2012 when I took the OSCP, and even today it's still very much effective. Um, and I highly recommend it. Go grab a bunch of practice VMs for Vulnhub. Practice trying to find various privilege escalation uh, exploits and ways to, to 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 gain root privileges. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, see you next week.